Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, Shai, by Hashem, Chakutash. Double honor to the Apostle of the Great Most, and well, peace, blessings to the elect of Israel, Shalom, and above all. Back at it with the list of the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Hashem, Shai. Lord willing, this video is edifying. All right. And I want to just touch on a few current events through the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Hashem, Shai. Um, you got food shortages going on. Okay, you got the 10 week wheat shortage. Okay, and then you also got this war general telling his soldiers to get ready to prepare for World War Three, man. OK, so I wanted to touch on these two topics. It says world has 10 weeks supply of wheat. Extra tells U.N. Security Council. This is seismic. OK, it says wheat lies plied in the grain warehouse earlier. Here is the uh, image of the description. It says global food insecurity has reached levels not since the f financial crisis of 2008 and is only going to get worse without aggressive intervention. A food insecurity expert told the United, United Nations Security Council this week. OK. It says Russia's invasion of Ukraine did not start a food security crisis, but it did add fuel to the fire that was long burning, says Sarah Menker, CEO of Grow Intelligence, a global company that uses artificial intelligence and public and private data to predict food supply trends. This isn't uh, cyclical. Cyclical. All right, let me look up this word. Okay. Recurrent. Okay. Cyclical, cyclical, cyclical. All right, this is occurring in cycles, recurrent. Okay, so this isn't repeating. She said it's this is seismic. You're going to that word seismic. It says relating to earthquakes or other vibrations of the earth and its crust. Seismic. This is relating or denoting to geological surveying methods availing. It says enormous. Here's the point of enormous proportions or effect. Okay. So this is a famine or wheat shortage that's coming of enormous proportions, man, through the spirit of power of Yahweh Shemashai. And it is prophesied in the scriptures that the Lord would break the staff of bread. Leviticus 26 and 26. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, 10 women shall bake your bread in one oven and they shall deliver your, your bread again by weight and ye shall eat and not be satisfied. OK, so the Lord says he's going to break the staff of bread. So the supply or the support of the food chains of bread, the wheat is going to be broken. Thus saith the Lord. Okay. And as well, it says they shall deliver you again your bread by weight. Meaning what? Food rations, man. Expect to see more food rations going on in America, man. Okay. And all around the world. Because famine is a part of biblical prophecy. Let's get let's get some more precepts on that. I want to get this one as well. This is um Second Ezra 15 and verse 5. It says, Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction, for wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. You see, so famine comes by way of wickedness, man. Okay? Famine is a plague of Yahweh Mashai. Famine is a judgment of the Lord. Ezekiel 5, starting at verse 16. It says, when, it, when I shall send upon them evil, let me start at verse 15, Ezekiel 5, 15. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt and an instruction and astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee. When I shall execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes, I, the Lord, have spoken it. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction and which I will send to destroy you and I will increase the famine upon you. And will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts. And they shall bereave thee and pestilence and blood shall pass through thee. And I will bring the sword upon thee. I the Lord have spoken it. And the scriptures say the most high is not a man that he should lie. None of his words that the Lord says will come back to him void, man. Okay. So everything that Yahweh Mashiach has set up in the spirit will indeed come to pass, man. Okay. And then you have the general Mark Milley. All right tells his uh, new officers to get ready for World War Three, man. All right. Like you should say, what? The third woe cometh quickly, man. OK, World War Three is approaching quickly, man. Revelation 11, starting at verse 14, it says the second woe is past. Talking about World War Two. And behold, the third woe cometh quickly, man. All right. There will be a World War Three. All right. 
indeed. Okay. Let's get another one in Revelation. Okay. So no, it's also known as, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Revelation 9 and 12. One woe is past, referring to World War One, and behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And when you read Revelation 9 from the top, okay, about to verse 12, it's talking about World War One. Okay, so war, the three world wars are prophesied in the Bible. Revelation 8 and 13, it says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet and the three angels which are yet to sound. Woe, 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 meaning what? Destruction. Woe means destruction, sorrow, distress. Those woes represent the third world war, man. Okay? And this is all a part of biblical prophecy as these nations will be gathered down into the Valley of Jehoshaphat in the Levant by the Fertile Crescent, man. That is where the main arena of World War III will take place. And guess what? Our Lord Yahweh Shai will return in the midst of World War III to gather his elect, okay, and to destroy the wicked and evil doers, man. As it says in uh, 2 Ezra 13, okay. 2nd Ezra 13 and 1, and it came to pass of the seven days I dreamed a dream by night, and lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. And I beheld, and lo, it says that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven, and when he turned his countenance to look, all things trembled that were seen under him. So every nation is going to tremble when they see Yahweh Shai return back with the angelic forces, the angels, all right, and what people know as the so called UFOs, man. Okay, the angels are, as you can see, there has been more and more reports of uh, angels. Okay, or rather UFOs, so-called, are which are known as the chariots of the Bible, man. Okay, the chariots of Israel, the chariots of Yahweh, Basham Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, and they're making their appearance more and more here in these latter days, because this is also biblical prophecy, man. Okay, this is a perfect priesthood going with Revelation one and seven. Behold, he coming with clouds. The chariots can liken themselves in the clouds. Okay, it says, and every eye shall see him, even they also which pierced him, man. It says, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, we're talking about the laser beams that come from the ships, okay, all they burned that heard his voice, like as the earth fell when it fills the fire. And after this, I beheld, and lo, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea, talking about from the upper atmosphere, from outer space, because outer space is comprised of waters. Going back to the time of the flood, the Lord opened up the firmament, and the waters from outer space was flooding the earth. It says, but I beheld, and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. <clears throat> but I would see in the region or places where out the hill was graven, and I could not, because Yahweh Shai came back in that fathership, man. That's going to cover the face of the whole planet Earth, man. Okay, there's so called UFOs, chariots that are bigger than the entire planet Earth, man. Okay? <clears throat> and it says, So that's why Ezra's saying he had it, uh, graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. Okay, it says, I would have seen the region or place where the hill was graven and I could not. Meaning he couldn't see where the chariot began or where it ended. Okay, he couldn't see the shape of it because it covered the face of the whole sky. It says, and after this I beheld and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid and yet durst fight. Right, the people who are in the midst of World War Three. Okay, and it says, they were sore afraid to fight against Yahweh Shai. But yet they still dared to fight him to fulfill Yahweh Shai's Shai word. It says, and lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath. And out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests, going into the laser beams. It says, and, all they were, and they were all mixed together, the blast of the fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which prepared to fight, and burned them up, every one that sat upon a sudden of a number of multitude. Nothing was, be, was to be perceived, but only dust and the smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. Okay, that's right. So, Yahweh Basham El Shai is, is going to have indignation upon these armies here in these last days. And Yahweh Shai is coming back to put the smack down on these different militaries who are going to come up try to fight against him, man. Okay, and the chariots. Okay, it's going to be a war of the worlds. This is uh, 2 Ezra uh, 13, starting at verse 26. It says, um, I'll start at 25. It says, this is the meaning of the vision. Whereas thou sawest a man coming up from the midst of the sea, the same as he whom the Most High, the Highest, hath kept the great season, which by his own self shall deliver his creature, talking about the nation of Israel, and he shall order them that are left behind. And whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came a blast of wind and fire and storm, 
that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. So the multitude came to subdue him. Why? Because that's the war in heaven as prophesied in Revelation. Like scripture say, they make the beast is going to make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them, man. Because Esau is going to be no match for those angelic forces when Yahushua comes back in the midst of World War III. Okay? And while World War III is going on, it will be a nuclear warfare. Thus saith the Lord. Okay? Isaiah 9 and 5. Let's get that real quick. Isaiah 9 and 5. It says, For every battle of the warriors with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this, talking about World War III, shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Okay? That's what's coming, man. Burning and fuel of fire. All right. Yahweh Bashmashai's burning and fuel of fire, his fire and brimstone will be upon all these wicked nations, man. Okay. Who come to fight against our Lord. And the Babylon, the great AKA America, will be destroyed. Isaiah 34 and 4 says, uh, Slaki, Isaiah 34 and 1, come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people. Let the earth hear and all that is therein, the world and all things that come forth of it. For in the indignation of the Lord is upon all nations, and his fury upon all their armies. He have utterly destroyed them. He have delivered them to the slaughter. So the armies of the world are going to try to fight against the Lord. And guess what? The Lord is going to deliver them to the slaughter, man. Their slain also shall be cast out, and their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. And the mountains shall be melted with their blood, going into that fire, man. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and all the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, going into the nuclear mushroom cloud. And all the hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth off from the vine and as a falling fig from the fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumia, a.k.a. Edom. All right, Idumia is the Greek way of saying Edom. The Lord's sword, the missiles, are going to come down upon Idumia and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Okay, Esau, Edom. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made with fat. It is, it is made fat with the fatness, with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of the kidneys of rams for the lord have a sacrifice in basra and a great slaughter in the land of idumia so what is this talking about okay that's talking about the missiles are going to burn up all the wicked doers these wicked doers are going to be made missile food fucking work okay psalms 37 actually is it psalms 37 wicked fat lambs because when you go back into the law psalms 37 and 20 when you go back into the law all right the uh you're supposed to burn the fat of the sacrifices and the burnt offerings okay so the lord is likening the people unto being like fat burnt on the altar man okay so the lord is gonna make babylon a sacrifice like it says he has a sacrifice in basra and that fire is gonna be from the icbm nuclear missiles and also the chariots psalms 37 Starting at a verse 18, it says, The Lord know of the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. They, talking about the upright, the elect, the righteous, shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And we're coming into some very evil times. Evil meaning bad times, man. Okay? And in the days of famine, which we're approaching the days of famine, as we brought out through the Spirit, the wheat shortage is coming up, man. Okay? And, you know, the brother Yeshai made a beautiful point. He said they got a 10-week wheat shortage. But as the word continues to go out, people are going to keep continuing to buy up, buy up uh, the stock. So it's really going to be through the spirit. You know, I'm speaking as a man. It might be shorter than 10 weeks, man. OK, because everybody's going to be panic rushing and panic buying, man. As prophesied in second Ezra 6 and 22, it says what? Let's get it real quick. You know, flowing through the spirit. Second Ezra 6 and 22, it says. And suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouse shall suddenly be found empty. Okay, that's what you're seeing now. You've seen the first taste of that with the first lockdowns. you see the shelves emptied out. The people were rationing the water. Okay, you can only buy a certain amount of items and meat. Well, guess what? That's coming back again, but way worse. Like we read earlier through the spirit, deliver your bread by weight, man. Okay, it says, but the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord. Let me get that again. Psalm 37 and 19. They shall not be ashamed of the evil times. So the elect, they're going to eat in the days of trouble. Those who want to fear the Lord and come back and serve him in righteousness and truth and sincerity, they're going to eat in the times of famine, man. All right. It says, and they sh in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. The elect are going to be satisfied in the time of famine, man. They're not just going to eat, but they're going to be satisfied and going to drink and rejoice and be merry, man. As it says, it's Isaiah 65, and, uh, verse 12 through 13. It says, but what? But the wicked shall perish and the enemies of the Lord shall be as the fat of lambs. They shall consume into smoke. Shall they consume away? That's right, man. These people are going to be missile food, man. 
Isaiah 9 also talks about how the people are going to be as fuel for the fire. Isaiah 9 and 18, for wickedness burneth as the fire. It shall devour the briars and thorns. You people are likened to briars and thorns, those who are covered in their sins. 2nd Ezra 17 and uh, 76 through 77. It's like it. 2nd Ezra 16, 76 through 77. Okay? Lord willing, we be protected from that judgment. Okay? And if we want to be protected from that judgment, ultimately the Lord has to have mercy upon you and you have to be of the elect. Okay? But the elect are going to put faith and works in towards the Habashim Shai, towards the salvation. 2nd Ezra 9 chapter tells you that. Verse 7. Okay? It says, it says, uh, for wickedness burneth as the fire, it shall devour the briars and thorns and shall kindle the thickets of the forest and they shall mount up like the lifting up of the, of smoke through the wrath of the Lord of hosts. Is the land darken because of the smoke that's going to come from the nuclear fire and the soot and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire, meaning these people are going to be as missile food. Okay. Cause when you go into the word fuel in that particular scripture, the Hebrew word there, the word represents the word meat. Okay, so these people are going to be missile food, man. <laughs> okay, it says no man shall spare his brother. Yeah, and these evil times that we're coming into, the love of men is going to wax cold. People are going to be fighting each other for that wheat shortage. They're going to be fighting each other for these loaves of bread. They're going to be fighting each other for food. All right, in the in the famines, it says no man shall spare his brother. The famine is going to be so bad, there's going to be cannibalism, man. Verse twenty, and he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. That's cannibalism, man. That's how bad the famine is getting ready to come, man. Okay? That's why it's important to fear Yahweh Shemeshai that you may be protected in these last days, man. Because it's going to be really bad. Okay? And then that's, that's to say the least, man. Okay? Our words really don't do it justice. The scriptures do it justice. You see, you see what I'm saying? But the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is terrible, man. Okay? You know, the scriptures give us, the scriptures, we like to say, we see through a, a glass darkly. So the scriptures give us a glimpse of what it's going to be like. But the Lord is going to really make sure that people get it ingrained in their head how terrible his words truly is. And how and why his words are to be trembled at and feared for. Okay? This is a terrible thing coming, man. Famine so bad, people are going to be eating their own children, eating their own brothers and sisters, fighting for loaves and, and hunger. Second Ezra 15 and 19, it says, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. Okay? Yeah, you're not going to care about little Susie who you grew up next to. You know? You ain't going to care about her in that day. If you see she got some food, you're going to tell her, run that, man. Okay? And you're not going to have any pity, pity on her. You're going to do it fiercely, man. Okay? That's how these people are going to be getting down here in these last days, man. And that's why we're going to need the protection of Yahweh Shmoshai. And nothing besides Yahweh Shmoshai's protection is going to save us. No matter how many weapons you got, no matter how much canned goods you got stored up, no matter how much items you got in your bug out bag, that is not going to help you unless Yahweh Shmoshai saves you. Point blank, period. Scriptures say, riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivered from death. Right? Second verse 15 and 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with a sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread. And for a great tribulation, man, terrible times are coming into it. Terrible times. All right, second Ezra 13 and uh, verse 27, it says, whereas thou sawest that out of his mouth there came a, as a blast of wind and fire and storm, talking about the laser beams. And that he held neither sword nor any instrument of war, but that the rushing in of him destroyed the whole multitude that came to subdue him. This is the interpretation. Behold, the days come when the Most High will begin to deliver them that are upon the earth, and he shall come to the astonishment of them that dwell on the earth. Yeah, when Yahweh Shai returns, it's going to be an astonishment because people are not going to be expecting Yahweh Shai to come back in uh, so called UFOs looking like a so called black man, man. Okay? To render judgment and fury. Okay? The scriptures call it the strangeness of their salvation, roughly paraphrasing. It says, and one shall undertake to fight against another, one city against another, one place against another, one people against another, and one realm against another. It's going to be a time of war. We're not coming into a time of peace. We're coming into a time of war, man. Ecclesiastes, the third chapter. All right. You're going to have World War Three going on. You're going to have different civil uh, war breakouts. You know, it's, and it's going to be like, uh, you know, every man for himself type thing out here, man. OK, and like it says, one realm against another because the heavenly forces are going to be fighting against these earthly forces, man. OK, it's going to be a war of the worlds and the time shall be when these things shall come to pass and the signs shall happen, which I showed thee before. And then shall my son be declared, Yahweh Shai, the son of the most high, whom thou sawest as a man ascending. And when all the people hear his voice, every man shall in their own land leave the battle they have one against another. And an innumerable multitude shall be gathered together as thou sawest them. 
willing to come and to overcome it by fighting. So in the midst of World War III, all these different nations, they're going to stop what they're doing and they're going to try to fight against Yahweh Shai and the angels. It says, but he shall stand upon the top of Mount Zion, talking about the, uh, the fathership, okay? And also the elect are going to be gathered up in that fathership. It says, and Zion shall come and shall be shewed to all men, being prepared and builded like as thou sawest the hill, graven without hands, and, hands, and this my son shall rebuke the wicked inventions of those nations, which for their wicked life are fallen into the tempest. And shall lay before them their evil thoughts and the torments wherewith they shall begin to be tormented, which are like unto a flame. And he shall destroy them without labor by the law, which is like unto me. Okay, that's right. So, Lord willing, this video is edifying. I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem El Shai, Bashem Kakodash, double honor to the Apostle Elders, Great Millstone, their wealth, peace, and blessing to the elect. All right, Shalom and a Baba Ball. We're coming into some very evil times. Fear the Lord or die.